Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Featherhoof. And I'm Carnage Panda. And we are here for week... Ten. Ten of Anime Talk. You do this every time. <laughs> I don't know them there fancy-ass numbers. The hell. Featherhoof never learned how to count. Don't tell him my secret. The hell. Well, we're here to uh, talk... I gotta get out of that accent or I will do it all fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, don't... Not gonna do it. Um, so, we are here to talk about week 10, where um, a decent slew of amines. <laughs> yeah, um, I really enjoyed this week. Shoutouts to Sword Art Online for being the most hilarious show that I watched this week that we are not going to be covering. Thank God. But anyway, beyond that point, <laughs> actually, he, he showed me some clips. Even if you hate, love or hate the show, Whichever side you're on, there's just things about this episode that are just... It's like, what, what did you call it? An unintentional comedy? Yes, uh, every so often there are episodes within a show that's supposed to be super serious, like a drama or something, that are just <laughs> unintentional. I, I, I can't even, man. This. <laughs> so instead of it being super serious, it's super serial. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go watch it. Uh, ha have a good time. And don't take this seriously. No. However, we're going to take something a little you know, mildly seriously, as seriously as you could really take anime. Because um, we have five animes that we watched, and we're going to talk about the ones we, we liked, the ones we weren't too keen on, and uh, what, we, you know, we, what we loved and what we didn't. Starting with our number five. And our number five this week is The Slayer of Goblins. Yes. Talk about surprising it would end up down here. <laughs> well, the, there's a very good reason for this, because... Unfortunately, nothing happens in this episode. I mean, there's kind of two sins an anime can really can really do as far as storytelling is concerned. Um, recap episodes. Oh, foreshadowing. Ooh, and nothing happening. Like, you know, it's it's one thing. You know, even day in the life animes, they'll set up something to happen in that day of the life. Nothing happens here. Literally nothing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, um, you know, something did happen. The, the soundtrack for this show is actually pretty good, mm -hmm, and yeah. it, it was really good in this episode. That's about the only thing I enjoyed about this episode, because this is like an anime we watched like 20-some years ago called Brain Powered. Oh. Well, maybe it's not as terrible oh, as that. Oh, God. Stab me in the heart, why don't you? Christ. That I I had blissfully forgotten about that piece of trash. Brain powered, or as we affectionately love it, brain damaged, <laughs> is a show about. We, we're not going to talk about nothing? brain powered. <laughs> what the okay, soundtrack? Look, yes, amazing. Actually, that, literally the only thing I remember about brain powered, the only thing. Mm, the onions are great today. <laughs> oh look, a brain powered. That's a line. That's a line. Yes, this. <laughs> Incredibly lulzy dialogue. Ugh. But, you know, like I said, even the most dull of animes, every episode will have something going on. Something in which the character needs to accomplish, or you know, something. This episode is... Hey, these three people, these three girls we, thro we showed for about five seconds at the o opening of the episode defeated the Demon Lord. And that means everyone can, can do nothing. You know what? The three girls saying defeating the Demon Lord. Mm -hmm. I thought at first that that was what Sword Maiden did. Yeah, I thought it was then, yeah, a flashback. <laughs> and this kind of feels disconnected from being within the show of Goblin Slayer. It did, because they all looked like characters from Sl the Slayers, didn't they? Yeah. It was it, like... It's it like... And, and they, they looked like they were having fun. Yes. It was... It was, it was very... Uh, what was what? Uh, dissonant. It was, it was it was quite the narrative dissonance with this scene. It was just really, really weird. It almost looked like something out of Konosuba. It, it 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 just it it was a, it there the first minute of the anime before the opening credits roll is a is from another anime. I think they slipped in another anime on us. They they sure did. Um, I I, I don't know what to say because the rest of this episode. This, this is going to be our shortest review ever for an episode. Okay, let's break it down. Um, Goblin Slayer reflects on life. 
Goblin Slayer gets his armor repaired. Goblin Slayer talks to people while in and out of armor. Um, and again, about nothing. Literally about nothing. Um, Goblin Slayer, you know, travels around with Cowgirl. Um, Cowgirl gets to meet his traveling companions. His adventuring companions. Um, they have food. Then, um, Goblin Slayer and Cowgirl have a moment out in the field where they stare at the moons and talk about, well, they, don't even, they talk about, they talk about talking about their future. Goblin Slayer wakes up, and then really the only point of this episode is Goblin Slayer wakes up one day to do his routine to check for goblins, finds goblin tracks, the end. That that's was it. That's a pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, that's the synopsis of the episode, and... Oh, wait, and, um, and one other scene, and this, this actually made the episode worth watching, was, um, was, uh, High Elf and Dwarf having a drinking contest while stock footage watched them. Yeah, yeah. Featherhoof was really criticizing this part <laughs> because there was heavy usage of stock footage, like, the same frame came in, like, eight or nine times. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating, but... Yeah, it's like there's this group, the, like the secondary group they set up in this episode. Yeah, the, the, remember the dude from episode five? Him and some other people he's training with. Um, and they're they get to they're watching the, the, the drink contest stoically. No, it's just a still frame that they just pan across like three different times. And this group of people cheering them on! Ah! In like GIF formation. Like, four times. It was just like... <laughs> so I did have a question. It seemed like... Because at the beginning, Goblin Slayer was outside of his armor, and yes. then he was talking to Lancer Dude, mm -hmm. and it appeared that Lancer Dude had no idea who nope. that was. Nope. <laughs> it was just like, how can you be this clues clueless? And even the Titty Witch, she she walks up, she knows who the Goblin Slayer is. Yep. My favorite part is that Tit Witch actually like she like looks at me, and oh. <laughs> walks out. <down>. It's like. <laughs> It's like, oh, that's what's underneath that armor. I'm liking. <laughs> sort of walks out. But, um, yeah, it's just no, like, with the exception of the last five seconds, no stakes are raised. And I'm not going to complain about a show not having action. A show can still be good without having action. That's, that's true, but... I mean, even Goblin Slayer has had good episodes without action. But this was not one of them. This feels like this is just setting up the next arc. I don't want to say next episode. Yeah, this whole arc of two episodes. Yeah, the the final two or three, I'm not sure. Episodes. Well, there's rumors. There's what somebody has heard that what is is to come. We won't talk about it here. But um, there there may be three episodes. There may only actually be two episodes. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's. I have nothing else to say about this episode. Like literally. I mean, if even if it felt like they were trying to grow Goblin Slayer's personality, you know, like character progression. <laughs> grow you know, his person. Oh no! Like <laughs> I, 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 I meant character progression. Shut up. You know, there was no even character progression in this episode. I see. What, what was it? So Soka. Soka. Oh, so Soka. 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 That's, it was twenty-two minutes of Soka. <laughs> Oh yeah, and uh, Sword Maiden going, I didn't have dreams of goblins anymore. The goblins are not terrorizing me, I'm not having nightmares. Yeah. Blah blah blah, and then there's like a fan service scene of the cowgirl getting undressed or something. Oh yeah, she takes a- It's yeah. not really- Doesn't do anything, it's literally no purpose. This episode is no purpose. It's episode five again, there's no purpose. <laughs> week five. But at least in week- in episode five- we got to learn about the the, uh, the practicality of clubs and how they're the most OP weapon. This episode, we didn't learn shit. Well, we need to take a club to this episode. Yeah. And with that, we're, like I said, shortest review of an episode we've ever done because there's nothing to say. It is a waste of your time. Don't bother. Just know that at the end of the episode, Goblin Slayer found Goblin Tracks outside of Cowgirl's farm. That's it. The end. Let's move on to, ep to week 11. But we can't until week 11 happens. So, for now, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next entry. Next entry on the list is Irodooku. Actually sort of uh, going up one step in the rankings this week because it actually did set up something and resolve some things. So, uh, you know, I don't think this was a bad episode, per se. But they did have to 
settle the badness of the last episode. Did they? They did, for the most part. You know what? Show can just go fuck himself. Show can. I'm not talking about show. I'm not talking about show. Show can. Show is like literally the stereotype definition of the clueless boy, and he is an he is basically a jackass for it. Uh, jackass? You mean? <laughs> let's, no, let's just move on. I <laughs> show is a waste of time. He is an absolute waste of time. Uh, but because it caused this awkward rift between Asagi and him, yeah. Uh, Hitomi? Hitomi. I keep wanting to say Hinata, but I know, sorry, Hitomi. Damn it. Wrong show. Yep. Hitomi and Isagi had this weird, awkward rift. And it's kind of funny, like, Isagi even says multiple times, like, I don't know why I'm treating Hitomi like this, it's not her fault. It's like, yeah. See, I didn't get why, this. Why? Why are you treating her like this? I did not get this at the beginning because... Asagi is actively avoiding Hitomi. Yeah. For, like, two scenes. Yeah. And then they get together, and they have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Yep. And they're like, oh, well, we understand each other now. Yep. And I think that was even the writers going, yeah, that last episode, but why did we write that? Why, why did we do that? So we're just going to wrap it all up real quick. In night bow, nice bow, moving on. <laughs> well, I think they even, you know, put commentary in the, was it last week where show was in agonizing pain from the band <laughs> playing? <laughs> That's how I kind of felt watching that episode. Well, they even put in a line for Asagi that was basically, I think, was supposed to be the line of the audience. Because Asagi's walking home with Sho, as they always do, apparently. And she says a line to, you know, insinuate what's been going on. And he's like, wait, what? And she's like, God, you're a fucking idiot. And, like, walks away. Very true. <laughs> That's uh, very true. But it's not even what the uh, majority of the episode has to no. do with. But they had to wrap it up, and I'm glad they did. They didn't drag it out. They didn't do some horrible love triangle or any garbage like that. It's just we're back to the status quo, and we can move on with the show. And the show moves on. There's a cultural festival coming up. Cultural festival? Something like that? Cultural something. I'm just going to go with the synopsis on Amazon where it was just the culture. Yeah, they were going... <laughs> yes, they're getting ready for the culture. Dot, dot, dot. Or ellipse. But, um, <laughs> so, they all have to, okay, they're all coming up with ideas for what their, their, their club is going to do for the cultural festival. For the culture. Um, <laughs> and so they, um, their grand plan, actually, I don't know how photography comes in this, because they're the photography club. They're the, the magic arts photography club, but only seems magic and arts are represented in, in their cultural presentation because they get the grand idea to use Hitomi's power to go into f into artwork. Um, Aoi is going to draw this like fantastical piece of artwork based on all of their input. And then Hitomi's going to use her magic to take visitors into that artwork. Which it is, by the way, I would, I would go there. I'd be like, that sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> but first, Hitomi has to do a lot of practice. Yeah. By flying paper airplanes into a monitor. Yes. And she fucks it up like five million times because every time she brings them out too early or too quickly and they keep slamming into her face. <laughs> Which was kind of, kind of fun to watch. <laughs> you know what? It's kind of like the, the slapstick thing where if Batman steps on the rake and it hits him. Yeah. That's, that's funnier than <laughs> if like, uh, oh... I can't think of a, a, a dumb person without getting political, so... Yeah, that's that's not... So it's like, you know, <coughs> it's, it's Hitomi, you know, the most anti-slapstick character ever. The most, you know, bland of blandy characters. Well, you where know... These, these paper airplanes keep going... Mages, <laughs> mages and sorcerers are supposed to be smart, so... Yeah, you one would imagine. <laughs> but, so... She's practicing, and they're all, like, cheering her on, her family, her... her her grandmother and her great grandmother are all cheering her on, which is kind of weird to call them that because when you see them as you know young people, but you know ha Kohaku and Kohaku's mother, I guess, and her great grandmother. Well, Kohaku's mother would be her great grandmother, so the grandmother in this time period is her great great grandmother. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she practices. She finally gets it. She's able to like send like twenty paper airplanes in there. And bring them all back and, lay, and land them perfectly on the desk. And they're all like, yes, we can do it! 
So show, or not show, um, fuck show. <laughs> Owie makes this like beautiful painting of um, a like a theme park ship. Well, pirate ship was part of it, but he's like making the whole theme park, isn't he? Well, that's what it ends up being. <laughs> yeah. <'cause... laughs> But you I think he was what? like I think he was like seriously zoomed in on that pirate ship like, this, because it was part of that big theme park painting he made. The, the part where they actually go into the painting is actually really cool. Yes, it fucking is. It's like it, it, I mean we've seen art, this art done once before when um, when Hitomi went inside Aoi's art. Yeah, and it was fantastic then, and now to see it, but like with then, it had these like great like darker tones and everything, and it was like because it was you know. Uh, always going through that artist block and everything. This is just beautiful, bright, and it's actually this really touching scene where Hitomi's talking about how this is the first time in her life she can actually confirm she's seeing the same colors as everyone else around her. And she's happy for the first time. Yeah, like truly, truly happy. And they're having fun in this theme park. Everyone's checking out this theme park. Asagi can't wait to go to Bunnyland. <laughs> and for some reason goes with show, even though she, he, she's like, give up on that boy, girl. Give up on that boy. Like, you want to just take, uh, sh like, Asagi by the shoulders, like, give up on him, please! You could do so much better! Well, she really has a thing for him, and, and he's just, uh... She has a thing for him. Uh, I'm not sure if I would go with the, the rabbits, because maybe she thinks they're cute, but... all her Using <laughs> that in juxtaposition with having a thing for show is just terribly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, Chisuga, uh, Chisuga and um, the chick you hate, the glass of the chick you hate. Yeah, they're, it's you like, know what? Even Speaking of Kurumi, it, Kurumi. it, it feels he like... He remembered her name this week. Yes, because I hate her. Uh, it feels <laughs> Which, like... Which, well, last week is, I hate her so much I'm not going to deem to bother remembering her name. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> it feels like the writers are just writing her out of the show at this point. Because she just says, like, one word each episode did he war. They're, like, slowly pulling her further and further into the background. They're like, yeah, Kurumi, you're just completely irrelevant at this point. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. You're not even going to be at the end when uh, Hitomi goes back to the future or whatever, you know. They're going to take a group photo and, yep, Kurumi, you're just going to be missing. <laughs> you really hate this little chick. Well, fortunately, they're not really covering her anymore, so... Much to your, much your joy. And can you hear the joy in his voice? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, while they're in the painting, Aoi and Hitomi have a little... They, they go off on their own. They're together. It's aww. And then they, they find a fish. The golden fish, their stalker fish, <laughs> is uh, appears before them and leads every them... Every move you make. Every step... <laughs> every move you make. Every... What's that sign? <coughs> Breath you take. Breath you, thank you. Creepiest song in the world when you read the lyrics. I'll be watching you. Yes, and, the stalker fish shows up again. And leads them into this dark place in the in the drawn woods. And they get separated. And it really focuses in on Aoi. He finds a door. He finds a big-ass fucking door with a, like a stone statue of Hitomi sitting next to it. Looking sad. And... He opens the door, in, goes inside, the door closes behind him, and he finds a child, Hitomi. Just sitting there drawing the most depressing picture ever over and over and over again. Yeah, it's the... Wow, she she really likes to draw this picture. This one particular because picture. Because there's just tons of papers all over the place of the same picture. And it has... A princess on one side, a queen on the other, and this big, jagged, black thing in between. I think Aoi referred to it as a river, but... Yeah, um, something like that. She can't cross over, blah, blah, blah. So, Aoi just like, I, hey, you know, and she's like, well, like, she keeps muttering, I, I, I was like, um, I can't meet them. Yeah, and Aoi's like, the fuck? <laughs> well, why can't you? I can't meet them. I can't meet them. like... He's like, you know, he's like, oh, is that he's a like, river? Yeah, just put a bridge or... So he sits down and starts drawing. <laughs> he draws a bunch of lovely... First he draws, um... Was it a bridge or... Oh, no, it was a boat. So it's like, he draws... Um, he told me on a boat. Well, it's like he's putting little pieces of paper on there because he puts, like, a boat or something. Yes. And then he told me he's like, no. <laughs> then he draws her. It's like, okay, what if you fly on a bird? It has a picture of 
her on a bird. <laughs> what if you? What, oh, what, what was the next? Was it just a rainbow bridge? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then she 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 picks up her drawing book. <laughs> and puts it down. Get out of here! <laughs> so I can't she, go across. Itachi killed my entire family. Yes, she's got Edge Lord. Like, you know, child Hitomi is Edge Lord, ma he Master Supreme. And then Aoi's still trying to be the the sensitive one, you know, the kind one. He's like, do you mind if I draw? And she sort of rips out a paper, page from her book and just slides it towards him. <laughs> so he just starts drawing with her. And um, then suddenly, like, the alarm goes off. And it's like, you know, they, they all get... They're back in the real yeah, they're, world. They're stuck back in the real world. And Aoi and Hitomi look at each other, and, it, and Aoi has the weirdest line. He's like, I just met you. Yeah, <laughs> what is with this line? <laughs> Featherhoof, I've just met you. Panda, I've just met you. <laughs> and thus, a bond of friendship was forged. Yes, forever and ever. And finally, ten episodes in, we find out why Hitomi doesn't like magic. Why she hates magic. Turns out, her mother was the first in the line of their family, apparently ever, who was born without magic. And, well, Hitomi grew up loving magic, loving the fact that she had magic and she could do all these things. She, fe she Her mother, one day... No rhyme, no reason behind it, just left. She just left. Oh, so we got the Hotty Bado ending. Yeah, there we go. Oh, God. I, I hate... Nope, nope, that's done. We said what we you needed to what? say. I, I felt that uh, it was actually some good cinematography. Yeah. Oh, dude, this, about this how anime is great just, on that. like, left. Mm -hmm. Because they bring up, like, was it episode one where they showed that the, the scene the last time? Yes. Okay, yeah, so... When she's on the bus, traveling through time, and they have the, the panels up there. Yeah. They just show it that way. Yep. And her mother is in a door, and it's like a silhouette, mm -hmm. and then she closes the door. So, Hitomi, being a child, of course, she you know comes to the the conclusion, the, 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 the you know, the, the, the painful conclusion that it was her fault. She believes that because she wasn't considerate of her mother's feelings not knowing magic, and she was so caught up in her own magic, and, you know, she was trying to make her mother happy, she says she tried to make her mom happy, she didn't realize how much torture and pain she was putting her mom through because she couldn't do magic, and it's her fault that she left. And Aoi kind of almost, I would almost say dispassionately, keeps, like, t trying to or tell dickishly. her... dickishly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do, how, how could you have, you know... He's saying what's, you know, what is logically correct. Yeah, it's very true. But he's saying it in a... Like I said, I put it nicely, saying it's dispassionately. He's... Panda's right, it was very dickishly. <laughs> he put he just sort of blurts out, how could that have been your fault? It's not your fault. Your mother left. Just, you know, he, he tries to talk to her in a logical fashion while she's highly emotional. You can't do that. You can't talk to somebody who's highly emotional with logic. And she gets very upset, obviously. So I kind of felt like I was sort of watching some kind of Evangelion thing here. Because uh, maybe. she has some problems with her mother, and this kind of parallels <laughs> Shinji's no. issues with his dad. No, Tendo. Only, yeah, yeah, but it's not like Gendo, where he's Gendo, just like Gendo. an asshole for <laughs> asshole's sake. And the stare. <laughs> <laughs> but... In this show's defense, when I was watching Evangelion, one of my thoughts was, man, these people are all just garbage human beings. Yes. But with the exception of, like, Sho and Kurumi, mm -hmm. and they're not even on the same level as the characters from Evangelion. No. But no. I just kind of got that, that kind of feeling. <laughs> well, it's like... I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not entirely certain. <laughs> but after the, it's like she gets mad. She sort of like, you know, she gets, she storms off a little bit. Aoi follows her, and they don't talk for a while. They have that, you know, the awkward silence as you walk, to, you know, walk next to somebody. There's an awkward silence where after you've had that a bit of an argument or whatever, and she just suddenly just stops and goes, you know, 
I kind of feel a little relieved, a little, a little refreshed suddenly out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, I never really talked about it before. And she, I don't know, it, it's, we, it, I mean, there was no real conclusion per se. She didn't like suddenly get over her childhood trauma, but it was nice to get some answers finally to the question we've had since episode one. And um, yeah, we, we've got some <laughs> Hanebato mother syndrome going on over here. If she comes back, I swear to God, if she comes back... There's and she only like two or three episodes left, man. Did you know oh my God, I know why. <laughs> I know it. I know it. The reason, the reason Kohaku sent Hitomi back into the past was because that's where her mother is. Her mother used time magic to go to the back to the past, even though she had no magic. But still. <laughs> <laughs> the only person in that timeline that can use time magic is Kohaku. So she probably sent her mother back first. She sent her mother back. Yep. There he is. <laughs> there like, it is. She just showed up one day and she's like, hey, uh, my daughter, or whatever your name is, they didn't give her name. Nope. She has no name. Yeah. Uh, they didn't give the name for uh, um, Hitomi's mom. So she's yep. just like, Hey, guess what? You're going back to the past. You don't have a choice. Uh, bye bye. Go, Bob. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably what happened. Yep, I'm calling it now. <laughs> okay, that's uh, one theory that we have on the future episodes of Iriduku. <laughs> future two episodes of Iriduku. I don't know where they're going to go with this. I mean, we got two episodes. They haven't even really stated whether Hitomi truly wants to stay or truly wants to go, or whether she has a choice in the matter. Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> if I stay, there will be trouble. Oh, if I go, right, was if I, okay. yeah, if I, if I go, it will be double. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so that was Iroduku. An interesting episode. I mean, mainly this is We're one of get the most so hard. <laughs> probably. We um, I if nothing else, I I like the episode because they took the crap from last episode, quickly swept it under the rug, so we can move on, and then moved on to some like really beautiful art. That gave us some some really good answers to what we've been asking since the beginning. I'm glad the the good artwork is back. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> that last episode was so bad yes. that they were like, we cannot put any exquisitely detailed faucets, nope. cobblestones, or anything in this episode. Nope. Episode 10, though, definitely turned it around. I'm happy they're turning it back around. We're heading towards the finale. Let's hope for the best. In the meantime, though, let's go ahead and move right along to our next entry. And coming in at number three this week, and the reason that I'm probably going to make a snow doggy when it <laughs> snows heavier, because <laughs> it's not snowing around here right now, is Zombieland Saga. Yes. <laughs> interesting episode, with an interesting ending. But uh, we actually, unlike the last episode, which suffered because we didn't get any Ohio Gazaimas. We got possibly the best Ohio Gozaimas the entire season. Tatsumi is back in uh, good form. <laughs> Full, yes, he is. Oh, Ohio Go was it? Ohio Lady Lee. <laughs> yeah, so he starts yodeling it. Like, <laughs> and I was commenting because they do the uh, voice recording over in Japan differently than they do it over here. Over here, they just like throw some dude in a room and are like, you're not allowed to come out of here until you get your lines done. And then they do... Yeah. Them one at a time, but over in Japan, they have everybody in the same room. And <laughs> I think it's got to be interesting because you have this one guy just fucking going psycho, like, ah, you know, I got a yodel, and screaming, Ohio goes I boss! <laughs> and then you have um, the actress for um, Yamada Tai, who is Sailor Moon, yep, just making grunts and dog sounds <laughs> <laughs> I want to get paid to make grunts and dog sounds god damn it <laughs> it just seems like a waste of an actor especially you know, a venerable one at that one that's been around forever and a fucking half yeah so she's got to be like in her 40s or 50s I don't know I don't know at this point but it's it's just so interesting you know I, I would love to be in the room with that guy, because he's got to be having, like, the most absolute fun of any person ever. He, he's literally like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger from uh, Batman and Robin. He's, like, the only person who's having fun on the whole set. <laughs> like, and he might even just be making stuff up, too, because... He might. He might just be like, yeah, this script, whatever, I'm just gonna do whatever I want to yeah. do. 
So, we were wrong last episode. We said that this episode was going to be a Yugiri heavy episode. Did not turn out to be that. I think they're just abandoning this stuff at the at this point. I, like, I don't know. They gave backgrounds for the other characters, and then they're mm -hmm. just like, Yeah, um... We kind of focused on Yugiri in the uh, preview, but uh, this episode has nothing to do with her. Even though she has she has a a formidable scene, you know. I mean, but that's about it. <laughs> um. So what was the episode? They um are getting their first big venue. Yeah. A really big gymnasium. Yep. That's what it looked like to me. I mean, it didn't look like a concert hall or. And it just looked like a really big gymnasium. You know what? You're you're absolutely right. <laughs> it looked like that's that's a, that's, a, that's like it looked like the, where they had they held their practices for Honey Bado only with lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, Tatsumi has some problem that they can't go on to well do their performance. He he see while the, while the girls are practicing, Sakura is like getting way ahead of everybody else. She's like super excited that they're gonna be holding this um their their concert at this place even though she doesn't know why she's like th there's something about this place that's triggering something in her brain and she can't figure out what it is because she has you know the no memories and all so she's like super like oh well, how would you call it um uh, enthusiastic <coughs> obsessed obsessed okay i would say obsessed because like she's like She's like practicing at night without everybody else, and like adding steps and routines to the the to the dance without telling anybody. And you know, she's always like in practice. She's always like many many steps ahead of everybody because she can't keep in rhythm with everybody. And Tatsumi does not like this. You see him in this one of those few rare um, serious moments where he's like watching the scene, going, hmm. "Yeah, we're just gonna go back to the uh, ep what was it like episode seven or eight where he's giving like life advice to." <laughs> I and Juko, and, yeah. and when she has mushrooms growing out of her hair. Only this time and, he does it he's stupidly. Like, <laughs> he's like giving her some Zen and Buddhist advice, and yep. he's being the sage and everything. <laughs> uh, he doesn't go to that level this episode. No, he apparently watched far too many 80s movies, because he decides to try and force a montage. <laughs> he, he literally says it out loud. He's like, you know, you know, in the movies when they go out and they, you know, into the wilderness and they have to, you know, struggle against a thing and they come back stronger. <laughs> yes, a montage. So he goes. He sends them out to the to the mountains, the snowy mountains. Yes, where they have to survive until he says they can come back. But they kind of point out that uh, they don't really need to survive because there's zombies. zombies. Yep. <laughs> Which so, raises the question, why are they even fucking hunting? Even zombies need to eat. Are you... <laughs> whatever. Hey, zombies are always eating <coughs> brains and flesh and stuff. They Apparently, even zombies need to eat. Apparently. Unless they do it for fun, I don't know. Zombies are zombies, I don't know. You can make up any zombie lore you want. There's, no, you know, I mean... There's like five million zombie lures at this po point anyway. Um, so... They're out there, and, um... All the girls just sort of like, they go, I think they're all, you know, used to his retardedness at this point. Like, okay, well, we gotta do it. Except for Sakura. Yeah, except for Sakura. She doesn't know what she's doing there. Nope. And she's like, she keeps wanting everyone to, like, we, got, we only have, you know, 14 days, 15 days, whatever it was, until our thing, we need to practice, we need to, always need to pr be practicing so we're perfect at it. And, you know, everyone's like, you know, collecting wood and... They're going off and, and doing their own thing, yeah. hunting, fishing. Well, well, it's not really doing their own thing. They're actually doing something to, for the group to survive. Survive. Quote-unquote, yeah. But Sakura's off doing her own independent thing. She's not She's not helping the group in any way, shape, or form to make shelter or make a giant dog snowman. <laughs> Do not criticize the dog snowman. Once again, once again, Yamata ties awoke. <laughs> She made a goddamn st <laughs> dog uh, snowman. Yeah, so Romero, their little doggy I... that transforms from little to vicious beast, uh, she makes a doggy snowman of him. Mm -hmm. Intricately detailed, yeah, by the way. Yeah, intricately detailed. Like, I want to go out and make something like this when it snows. Yep. I'll put it in the front yard and people will just drive by and be like, what the fuck? And the first child that goes by will knock it over. Nah, uh, 
I have a dog that does not like children, and he will make sure uh, that they do not knock it over. But yeah, it is a, it is a high risk because children suck. So after a very very poorly executed plan to try and capture a, a baby boar for them to nom on, which unfortunately attracts, I think they call it the daddy boar. Yeah, so I is going out to hunt this boar, and the reasoning she gives is because she has better kinetic vision. I don't I guess. know, I don't know what, what that, that means. is even supposed to. Yeah, I'm with Featherhoof here. I don't know what that even means, but <laughs> she has better kinetic vision, which I guess is a plus. But she misses all of her shots. Well, she only missed the shot because she, you know, she wasn't ready to take the shot. Sakura sort of scared the boar well, away. If you're not ready to take the shot, then don't take it. But she got, she, well, it's because the boar was running away and she tried to do a last ditch effort to get it. <laughs> well, anyway, the boar gets away and yep. they're like coming up with some wily e. coyote plan to <laughs> snag the boar when it comes back. So they make a little trap in the ground and they hear the noise of it coming like, quick, everyone hide. And Sakura being, you know, Sakura, she, and she falls in the trap herself. <laughs> and then like, the giant boar that was the same size as Lily's dad comes out and yep. uh, noms on her head. And takes it clean off. To but it. they're able to rescue her head and... Again, further proof Yamata Tai is awoke. She saved Sakura's head. Consciously saved Sakura's head. You know she did. She's kind of running like a dog, though. Yes. Just, like... <laughs> she doesn't give any fucks at this point. <laughs> Yeah, she has to be awoke if she's making these... Like, she just sits there, like, drooling, like, I don't give a fuck, you know? Yep. This, this, whatever. Yep. So, Sakura's had enough. She she can't take it. She's she's pissed. So, Tatsumi comes back and is like, you know, yodels his Ohio Gazaimas once again. And <laughs> he, um... He's like, so did you all learn anything? And Sakura's just like, I'm done. I'm out. I'm not doing this. I'm going back. I'm not staying here. I got practice that needs to be done. I can't be sitting here wasting time on this. Yeah. Tatsumi's like, the fuck? Yeah, but my plan didn't work. What? And so they're all back. Um, Sakura's practicing on her own. She's not even practicing with the group anymore. The group's sort of doing their own, like, you know, practicing. And Tatsumi is out having a drink. He's out. Yeah, he's out having a drink and then... Yugiri shows up to do her little courtesan dance routine. Yes. And listen to him bitch and moan. Yep. And <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. And she kind of repeats what she did to Sakura because Tatsumi just, like, is finishing saying <laughs> what he's gonna correct. <clears throat> and she slaps him across the face and is like, no, you need to block into this. She repeats exactly what he says, and he's like, "But that's that's what I said." <laughs> Everybody did you did you, and, and then she leaves, and he's like, "But but I, I said that." <laughs> he he actually pleads to the rest of the bar. He's like, "You you heard me say it, right?" <laughs> so Sakura eventually she she's practicing on her own. She goes back inside. And she sees, she's like, go talk to the group. And she sees them working, you know, practicing and talking, you know, through their routine. And she goes, you know what? I've, I've never seen it from this side of things. So she watches them as opposed to joins in. Every move you make. Every. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to get flagged. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. And she realizes, finally, that everyone has been working together. Everyone's working together at whatever it is they're doing. Everyone's in sync with each other, except for her. You know, even when they were out on the mountain thing. She you know, was like, she's like, oh, okay, so yeah, they were actually, you know, syncing up by doing these things out in the mountain, and I was just off in La La Land. Yep, being a whiny bitch, which she was. And so she goes in there, she apologizes to everyone, and, you know, it's just, they welcome her back into the fold, it's like, aww, isn't that beautiful? And then the end of the episode happens. Yes, the beautiful end of the episode. Which was just a palette, a color palette swap of the beginning of the first episode of the show. 
It was beautiful. She's literally going through the same routines, with the exception of she didn't have an envelope on her. But she uh, gets... Uh, uh. Romero is following her. Romero is following her. She gets up. Which, by the way, I just realized the significance of um, the dog being named Romero. You just you just realized it. Because I didn't know its name Ten was Romero. I didn't know its name was Romero until oh. today. Oh, okay. I just now realized that. But anyway. Spoilers, I knew this before the show even started. <coughs> so she get she puts on some shoes the way she did in the first episode. She happily walks out the front door the way she did in the first episode. You can see it coming a mile away, and you're asking yourself, they're not, are they? They they're, are! They're not! She Calls out that she'll be back in a while, runs out the front door, and revenge of drunk of uh, truck coon. Yeah, he gets her <laughs> real good. They, it's like a repeat. Uh, they they hit her. Truck coon hits her on multiple angles, and there's actually a driver this time <laughs> who pops out, and he's like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" And Romero chases him off. He's like, "Oh, blah blah blah," <laughs> and uh, Romero's like checking on her to see if she's okay. So I guess. Romero is awake, too? I don't know. <laughs> he didn't really check on her. He's just sitting next to her, like, making weird little... Uh, uh, poor... Zombie dog noises. The, I mean, the poor voice actor in the booth on this one. Like, I It's like, I don't know what the fuck these noises were supposed to be. They weren't a fucking dog noises. I don't know what they were supposed... What if Yamata Tai and Romero's brains were swapped? Because Yamatai is always acting like a dog. And Romero always seems a little more intelligent than a normal dog. Anyway, I'm sorry. Weird theory that just popped into my head there for a second. That is... <laughs> I, I don't think I've heard that anywhere else, you know. <laughs> that makes perfect fucking sense. <laughs> okay. I, did I did I unravel the secret? Am I a, a, an accidental genius? Nah, probably not. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna uh, pay attention to see if this uh, actually unfolds. So she, <laughs> Truck Coon, hits her good, right in the face. And she wakes up, and now we're in a fucking soap opera because she's suddenly amnesiatic. She's like, where, where am I? And she starts to have like little flashes of memories in her brain, and then she just sort of falls over unconscious. And it sort of cuts right there. So I think we're going to get in our next episode. It's going to be obviously the very Sakura heavy episode. We're just skipping Yugiri all together. And, um, uh, and Yamada Tai, uh, they're not going to give any. Good did, but let's be perfectly uh, honest. Let's be perfectly honest, though. Do we need an explanation of Yamata Tai? Obviously not. I'm having fun with her just the way she is. I don't think I need to know anything about her. So uh, I did go back and watch like the first minute or two of the uh, first episode. Okay. Just to see if it was the same truck, but they have a different license plate. But was it also white? Yeah. Okay. It was All white. Right. All right. It's basically the same truck except for the license plate being different. Okay. However, I did notice that, uh, which I didn't notice the first time I was watching this because I haven't rewatched the first episode. Right. Up until today, which I only mm -hmm. watched like. Two minutes of it just to reconfirm <laughs> while you were off like spinning in circles and that uh that letter or package or whatever she's holding is from the zls corporation yes and you know like saki is wearing like zls on her coat and stuff yep so um maybe she sent off a, a message to the wrong people <laughs> and they sent back a reply <laughs> <laughs> it's like, huh, we need a, we need to send a reply. Which of our most trusted employees can we send to to uh, give a reply? Hmm, no, not Bob from accounting. Uh, not Stacy. No, she's not really good with people. Truck Coon, could you give us give her, send her our message? <laughs> beep beep. All right, Truck Coon, send her our send her a reply. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna have ourselves. I think it's is we're gonna have. Amnesiatic Sakura next episode, but I think it's like they, they can play it different ways. I think they're gonna play it. Um, she's gonna have forgotten everything as a zombie. She's gonna re regain all her human memories and not have any of her zombie memories. That could be the case. Uh, I I'd like to see what happens. Um, the show too. has not really let me down except for 
last the episode, Saki episode, which was just kind of which is that was meh. that and that that disappointed me even more because Saki's one of my favorite characters. Yeah, you know, poor 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 Saki. She gets like one of the worst episodes in the history of ever. Oh, <laughs> in the history of ever. Yes. Did, did of you? Zombieland Saga. Oh, okay, least. okay, all right, all right. So that was Zombieland Saga. We enjoyed it this week. It was fun, but there was uh, something else we enjoyed more, and we're going to talk about that right now. And this week on Double Decker, we have the continuing saga of Doug not wanting to work. Well, that's not <laughs> important, so let's skip it. <laughs> Actually, it was a fun part of the episode, is watching Doug continuously... Um, Trying did... to dodge out of work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kirill wants to get back on the beat while Doug is uh, recovering. But apparently, according to the Double Decker system, if both people don't turn in their reports... Neither of them can continue to work. Okay, so was Doug injured in the last episode? Yeah, he was tortured, remember? Was he? Yes, by the leprechaun. <laughs> and the big dude and the lady. Oh, fuck, I forgot about the fucking leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what happens when you don't do any development on your, uh, on your... Legion of Doom. Yes, we still don't know who the fuck the villains really are or so... what they're there for. So, for th this makes me think that this is going to get a second season. Possibly. Because to wrap up the entire Legion of Doom, we've got the, the, the woman, the leprechaun, <laughs> the fucking leprechaun, uh, Bamboo Man, and who's that? Sa whoever's the Zabis, lead. Zabis, Zabis, no, that's Metroid. Um, Z it started with a Z, if yeah. you know his name now. <laughs> uh, who, you, you got all these Sansa? villains that... No, that was from Xenoblade. Uh, damn it, start with a Z. Well, know. Z Man, because we know that Z's like the top rank, at least uh, the way that um, Doug figured it out. Yeah. We got all these villains that we have to cover and give some backstory and maybe, you know, give them some names other than just uh, Evil Woman and Leprechaun. And Big Guy. <laughs> but this episode, they're in the hospital. And, um,. <laughs> Well, there's this, like, interesting scene where, um, this boy tries to... tries to buy... Kirill? Because yes, he the, thinks that he's... he thinks he's a girl? The continuing joke that, uh, people that don't know Kirill think that he's a woman. Yes. <laughs> and, um... They, they, he's, they sort of, like, let him go, you know, and, you know, for... You know, because it's like, dad shows up and he's, like, critically on the hospital, like... He's like, and, you know, we're done here, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, go, kid, get... Poor little Gus and his dying dad. Yeah, poor. And, um, so, Pink and Rookie show up to investigate the death of the Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I nearly forgot about that, so, um, the g I'm not joking! I'm yeah. not joking! We're gonna, I, he's we're gonna, gonna- He's gonna send me a screen cap, I'm gonna put it across the screen right now. They're just- they're there to- to- uh, investigate the deaths of four former patients of this hospital who were found dead with traces of Anthem in their blood. And they're the fucking Ghostbusters! Yeah, uh, it's, it's unmistakable that this is an allusion to the Ghostbusters. Yup. Which, um, <laughs> I loved, I loved to know. And then, end. uh, Gus, what's his name? Is, is Gus's that... little kid. Yeah, Gus immediately propositions both Rookie and Pink. Well, no, he propositions Rookie. Well, he pro propositioned <laughs> Rookie and Pink mistaked it. That uh, he was trying to hire the, her as a prostitute, and she's like, "This isn't enough money." So I <laughs> guess think... Pink would have done it for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's enough hot money for me? <laughs> Makes me wonder what what was her price. <laughs> but then he's like, "No, no, I was I was trying to get her," and she's like, takes it as like, "Oh, you're you're insulting me as an old woman," because I guess uh, rookie is younger. Noticeably so, yes. <laughs> uh, and so um, he avoids getting waterboarded because Kirill shows up and is like, uh, you gotta let the kid go. <laughs> waterboarded? This is pink we're talking about. Good point. Good point. So, they, uh, he goes with he goes with um, pink and rookie and they were talking about the, the dead Ghostbusters and they start, the doctors start talking about Anthem being possibly used as a cure. And Pink and Rookie are like, well, how would that even possibly work? And out of nowhere, K 
Kirill stands up and starts to explain meta, you know, metaphysics and genealogy yeah, so and uh, DNA strands and structures. Apparently the whole time, Kirill has had a PhD in genealogy or whatever. Genetics. It's like... <laughs> Which, which, by the way, when he explains it, he's, he explained he learned it from a manga. Yeah, he, he was so taken by the story that he read in a manga <coughs> that he wrote a, uh, I guess, cutting-edge and influential paper on genetics and submitted it for tuition to get to the... You know what? The whole fucking thing doesn't even make sense. A paper that even uh, Dr. Apple was like, Oh yeah, I read that like 12, 13 years ago. It was a really inspirational paper. And DeKiro's like, oh, I'm glad you liked it. He's like, what? <laughs> then he looks at, he sees the author's name, and he's like, that was you? <laughs> <coughs> so, Carol turns out, and, and I love it, because, like, Pink is holding him up at gunpoint. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's like, there's no fucking way. Who wears the real yeah, Kirill? she's just, she's incredulous. She's like, that. there's no way that's Carol because the Carol I know and, and love is tolerate. dumb. <laughs> The god, the hero that we know and tolerate, I think, is more appropriate. <laughs> that may be true. So they can't believe that Kirill's actually, and <laughs> actually, Kirill is funny. They're like, "So you're actually fucking smart?" And he's like, "No, I'm actually just an idiot." Because the moment I finished writing that paper and I turned it in, I forgot every word. Which <laughs> is like, I I can relate. I, I've done that. <laughs> well, that's true. I can't remember things that I've written years ago. So. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> So, well, that's all happening, and, and, and oh yeah, because the reason that he's all has all these papers out and everything is because after he shows himself to be this accidental genius, the doctor actually asks him because he's part of Seven O and Seven O's part of the military. Is hey, seeing as you have access to the military, could you uh, submit a, uh, a proposal to them for me on my behalf to uh, try, you know for studies on Anthem as a as a medical thing, you know, sort of like a. I guess trying to make a parallel between marijuana, I guess. Yeah, you, know, mar you know, medical marijuana, I guess. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. I don't know if, if that's what they're going for, but that's what it felt like. But um, I mean, yeah, marijuana kills a third of the people. I know. I know. No. 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 I know. I understand. Marijuana people don't get on me. I understand. I'm actually. I'm actually. <laughs> marijuana cures cancer and baldness. And, and <laughs> I'm actually. I'm actually. I'm actually pro. All right. So don't. I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. Everyone your users. eyesight. And, and, oh shit! Give uh, me, give me, give me now. I believe you. Um, <laughs> but uh, so while that's all happening, uh, Doug is walking around the hospital, still trying to avoid all his his mounds of paperwork in his room. I love they showed his room. They were just like my like mountains of paperwork, like literally boxes. And he's doing this just so Kiro can't do his job. <laughs> Because if Kiro can't do his job, that means he has time off. <laughs> and he apparently the narrator says he really wants time off. I mean, I, at this point, I don't even blame him. No. But he comes across uh, <coughs> Gus's dad. And Gus's dad talks about how... Because he sees Gus out the window and how he's like... He keeps going to every woman trying to offer them money. And um, he's like, uh, you know, Gus has always been on my side and... You know, he, he never leaves my side. I, I hope I was a good dad and everything. And he's he's lamenting about what's going to happen when it, when he dies and his son's left alone. He's he, as a father would be worried about him. And meanwhile, there's this dude in the other bed that's just like, like crying for anyone who will hear him. You know, in a weak voice, he's save me, please save me. And there's this dude walking the hallways. As Doug is um, out, you know, out in one of his nightly ex excursions, and um, he, I guess, it's insinuated he gives Anthem to the dude. He must have, because Doug sneaks out of the prison or the prison, the hospital. The prison. Sorry, yes, uh, the hospital. He got he got tortured by the leprechaun, and so they imprisoned him over it. Shut up. <laughs> That's but, uh, that sounds like you. looks so, like justice to me. Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> um, he sneaks out of the hospital to follow. The old guy. The old guy is fit as a fiddle. He's walking around. The guy was just like, save me, please, I don't want to die. And he calls Kirill, tells him to meet him at some place and bring an, 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 an analysis kit with him. So they go, and he they, he's like, Kirill, that guy's under on overdrive. He's like, oh, what, really? And he tries using his little eye thing and just comes up, error. 
you know, he basically eased his calculator. <laughs> and um, he's like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, we'll have to follow him. And they follow him and, like, they corner him and they have, like, a little scuffle in which a, a knife... <laughs> Yeah, Kirill is also a massive a knife at Kirill. And Kirill shoots it out of the air. Shoots it out of the air and it plants in his arm. Kirill is an accidental the, genius. The other guy's yeah, arm. Yeah, the, the anthem Kirill's. guy. Yeah, the anthem guy's arm. Uh, that, that would be pretty bad if you shot the knife and then it went into your <laughs> arm. Kirill's an accidental genius and an accidental marksman. So he... <laughs> the guy, like... Gets out of there gorilla style. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, this uh, can't stop me, so... He's like, this is so wrong. You know, I was gonna die anyways. It's so turns, wrong that I'm just. I wanted a little ray of hope. Up the walls and climbs the building. Like he he pulls a beast, like from X Men. He pulls that shit and he, he gets out of there. And they they test they take his blood in the test kit that he, Kirill asked him to bring, and they bring it to the head of the of the hospital, and the, the head the director of the hospital. And he's like, you know, this patient of yours. He he left. You know, he was on death's door and he suddenly left here fit as a fiddle. He's like, hey, if he didn't want any more of my, you know, uh, medical treatment, he denied medical treatment, what was I supposed to do? And so I just let him go. I was hopeless before this guy. So, you know, he's like, yeah, well, we tested his blood and there was anthem in his blood, but it was a different kind of strain. It was different. It was something weird about it. He's like, hey, you know, you know what? This interview's over. I think you should leave now. I think you should leave. I'm not guilty and I'm not being suspicious. <laughs> <sighs> so as I walk through the hallways, um... You know, gorilla. We'll call him gorilla guy. He's like sh suddenly, sh <laughs> he pulls a Jason Voorhees and just comes through the window of the third floor. <laughs> He's like, I started bleeding and it won't stop bleeding and I can't feel hot or cold or pain or anything. You need to help me. You need to help. Yeah. So for a guy who is just bleeding all over the place, he is absent of all bleeding all over the place, at least at first. Yeah. Well, it's like he's. He apparently has some. He, you know, so the the mm. the artist drew him with red splotches I mean, on him, but there sure as fuck was no blood anywhere. I mean, uh, jumping through a window of this third story certainly didn't help his case. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just think of all that glass that's gonna cut you and stuff. Yep. So this guy's not the the <coughs> smartest person. Uh, that's nope. clearly Kirill, who's <laughs> also dumb. He he's a fucking. Uh, Idiot genius? I don't know. I don't know how to describe Kirill anymore. But he, um, he's like, Doug's like, well, we can, we can help you if you lead us to the guy who gave you the anthem. And yeah, that's it. And the guy goes, okay. And he starts, he leads him right to, surprise, the head, the head of the hospital. Who's, Spoilers, they're bad guys. Yep. He's trying to talk uh, Gus's dad into taking anthem. And uh, he's like, hey, you know, it'll cure your all your you know your ailments and make you live longer and you know be stronger, faster. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. We're gonna get flagged again. <laughs> and you know he, you know, Doug and Carol bust in at that point, and it turns out that they're part of Esperanza. No, no one saw this coming. <laughs> and, what a uh, twist! It, what a twist! <laughs> <laughs> It's like, strangely enough, nobody really like goes mu you know, mutated on this this episode. Uh, because they pulled the a curtain back. Yes. In the, I didn't even know there was a curtain in this room to begin with. You didn't. But then I they pulled it? the curtain back. Well, no. And like, what's his face? The gorilla guy. He he um grabs one of the doctors, and he like tries like to force him to try and give him. He's this. just gonna shake him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he pounces on him, and they fall backwards through the. The sheet. <laughs> yeah, the doctor's like, I'm going to make you feel good. I got this shot for him, for you. And he's like, no! And he throws him. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that plan didn't work out too well. No, it didn't. And they they put him down with their anti-anthem bullets. Which apparently makes them fart. Because he shot him with the anti-anthem bullets and just like, pink smoke came out of everywhere. Apparently this guy's going to die too. I... I didn't understand. Well, he was going to die anyway. <laughs> just the anthem was going to make him live longer. Because Kirill shot him with the anti-anthem bullet, and yeah. then he's like, No, you screwed this guy over! Now he's going to die! <laughs> so it turns out that they've been injecting fatal pa like le uh What's the word? When someone's terminal. They've just been making guinea pigs out of these guys. Yeah. Terminal patients, they've been making guinea pigs out of them so that they can find try and find the 
proper dosage of the anti-anthem bullet. So, you know, Kiro like grabs the dude, he grabs the dude, and he's yelling in his face, and the doctor's like, he's like turns to Gus's dad, he's like, hey, if you take the take the anthem and turn it, you have the strength of a giant, and you can stop these guys. You know, they want you to die. You don't want to die, do you? Take the anthem, and you can save me, and we can. You know, we can make sure you can live forever and, you know, you'll be super strong. You, don't you want to see your, your son grow up and get married and have kids and see, you know, hold your grandchildren? And... Yeah, he's giving them whole come to the dark side yes. speech. But then, and it looks like he's going to grab it and then he stomps on it. He's like, he's like, I don't need this stuff. He's like, of course I would love to see that. But I'd rather, you know, I'd rather die by, you know, die yeah, a father than... Die with dignity. Yeah, die a father instead of live a mon like a monster. And, you know, they hold each other and have a cry, and it's it's cute, you know. And, you know, they take the guy away. They put him in handcuffs, and they, you know, they arrest the dude. The, 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 the doctor, the head of the, head of the hospital. So, the episode... I'm not sure these doctors were evil, because they didn't... Not not a one of them had a mustache. You know, you, ha you, you, you have a point. They, they must have been manipulated by the leprechaun. <coughs> fucking leprechaun <laughs> so there's, like, there's one cute scene at the end where to prove that he can live he you know gus can prove that he can live after his father's gone and his father doesn't need to worry about him he comes in in a tuxedo with kirill dressed as a bride he's like I, w I promise you dad i'll get married one day and even if i don't get married i at least have a kid and i'll become a dad and i'll be a you know, I promise you, I'll be as good a dad as you were to me, if not better. You don't have to worry about me. Everything will be fine. And, you know, again, they have their, you know, the father-son loving embrace. It's actually a pretty nice moment. I actually teared up a little bit. I think they honest, have a point but... here because in the drag and the lipstick, uh, Kirill does look like a woman. Absolutely does, yes. <laughs> so, that was Double Decker. It, uh, it was a fun episode. And I gotta say... They actually proved that an episode that is Doug and Kirill heavy they can still be good. Week. No, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, yep. because it started everybody. It started everybody. Start everybody. Yep. Okay. This episode was just about Doug and Kirill. Okay, you're getting a little technical here again. Hey, hey, that's what happened. That's what happened. So, Doug, Double Decker comes in at our number two slot. So, I can only wonder what's coming in our number one slot. Me too. I have... I have no idea. Maybe we should jump cut right to it so we can we can all find out together. Yeah, let's go see it. And coming in at number one this week is SSSS Gridman, which we're actually not covering, so we're going to cover something that we're actually watching. <laughs> Banana Fish. Yes. <laughs> yes! Where... What happened this episode? A lot happened. Really? Yes. Is, is is Ash a cheater at life? Um, I think we're gonna have to ban Ash from from the server. Yes, we're gonna have to ban Ash from this server because Jesus Christ. Um, he has been openly caught cheating. Uh, he is an unrepeating uh, uh unrepentant? unrepentant repeat offender, and we need to put him away for life. Yes, I mean he's not allowed on this banana fish server anymore. He's, I swear. Okay, so he's captured. Okay, people are you know, half of the all the people who were captured are sent off to the National Health Institute or ha National Mental Health Institute, and um, they might as well just call this place a human ranch at this point. It basically is. It's the Acelia <coughs> Human Ranch, <laughs> and they and then Commander Fox, because if you're a villain in this show, you have to be a gay pedophilic rapist so he has to prove in fact that commander fox is a gay pedophilic rapist by taking him into the back room questioning him for for what a whole 30 seconds before he gets right to the raping <laughs> yeah he's uh, like yeah you gonna get raped it's he's like <laughs> not even I, I don't know what this guy's deal is because he showed up so late in the show. Yeah. And there's last much... episode. He showed up last episode. <laughs> there's, there... Yeah, and in the last episode, he was barely there. He he showed up, asked to Ash to go out with him, and then was at the end of the episode. Yeah. He's like, now can you go out with me? Yeah. So 
he wants to know secrets about Golzine, I guess? It looks like he wants him to tell him the secrets that Golzine's been hiding, and Ash won't tell him. So he rapes him. This is from that uh, movie that you may have watched called Tropic Thunder. I have, actually. There's a scene in there where... Um, who's the guy who plays Iron Man again? Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. He's talking to um, Ben Stiller. Okay. He's a guy that I hate more than Karumi. But uh, he's talking about the film that he did where he's supposed to be playing a retarded guy. Yes. And, I, oh, you can't go for... <laughs> and, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s character tells him, you just don't go full retard. Yeah. Never, never go full retard. Yes. And this guy is going full retard here. There's, like, no reason. In, like, Goldstein's obsession with Ash is just... <laughs> Dear Lord, man, just give it up. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to get Ash back. Um, I don't know what, uh, what's his name again? Fox. Yeah, Commander Fox. I don't know what his deal is. Like he's like talking to Ash, like you know, tell me Golzine's secrets, and you know, you can work for us, and we can rule the world. Yeah, so he's the most shallow, one-dimensional character we have gotten in this show. See, this is how we know. This is how we know that Blanca isn't actually a bad guy. Because he has not been shown to be pedophilic or a rapist. Yet. Yet. He loves his guns too much. Ah, oh, great. You put an image in my head that I can't unsee. <laughs> Ew! It was worth it. Ew! It was worth it. Ew! Ew! Anyway, so um, after his uh, sound and prompt raping by Commander Fox, um, he gets a call from Golzine. To give a status report? Yes. And he's like, okay, Books, go in here and uh, you can beat him up if you want. Yeah. So, meanwhile, but, meanwhile um, AG. He throws and... his cigarette down. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that was smart. I I'm going to complain about that scene, but we'll get there. So, while he leaves the room, it shows that AG, Kane, um, Kane Jessica, Blood. and. Sing. Yes, yeah, is uh, they come back to oh, was wait was Cain Blood there? Yeah, okay. Cain Blood's everywhere. <laughs> so they come back to rescue uh, Ash, but they're like, oh man, there's two guards outside, at least four inside. Ugh. There's nothing we can do unless Ash makes a move from the inside. And then you know, once we get the the, uh, the you know uh, that uh, you know that evidence, we can move in. So on cue, as Ash is being pummeled by Fox's men, which Fox's like, hey, you can get your revenge, but don't kill him. He's expensive merchandise. They're beating the, the crap out of him. What the fuck are they beating him up for then? Because they, ki because they killed his friend, you know, their friends. <laughs> their comrades, you know. The other but, but bad Golzine guys. But Golzine wants him in pr pristine condition because Golzine is an idiot. Golzine just wants him alive. Uh, yeah, you could have some uh, broken ribs, uh, <laughs> broken fingers, uh, you don't need your nose intact, you just need to be alive. Um... That's all I need out of you, Ash. So, Ash takes the opportunity that when he gets, like, punched across the face, he does, like, a very obvious pratfall so that he'll fall on the, on the cigarette. And then he uses it as he's being kicked and pummeled. These must be the weakest ropes ever. Because this he uses... very true. He uses a cigarette, a used cigarette, to somehow burn through the rope. Hey, anime logic. I'm not even going to accept that as an excuse. That is... Are you kidding me? That was... Do you know what happens moments after he burns the ropes off? I do. And it's so... It's so ridiculous that I can't put it into words. Please. After you. Yes, yeah, so, um... He burns the ropes off, <clears throat> which first with off, the cigarette. First off, first first rule that he turned his cheat his uh, cheat mods back on. Yeah, so he's he's turned his cheat mods back off. On, or on. <laughs> if he turned them off, that would that be uh, that'd be bad a, for him. That's a bad take. <laughs> but he's turned them back on at this point. Um, ban Ash for life. Yep. Uh, he punches <laughs> out the <laughs> hashtag Ban Ash for life. <laughs> so no, he doesn't punch him out. I don't know what I'm talking no, about here. He grabs, he grabs his, his knife. knife out of his, his, um... Boot. 
It's it, like was his, it was in the boot. It was it was either on his on his outer thigh or his boot. Yeah, he just pulls it out and stabs him. He just gives him a good shanking, like right beneath <laughs> beneath the ribs, up into the heart. Uh, surprise! There was not a Wilhelm scream there. <laughs> and then, amazingly, he throws the knife mm -hmm. because that's a thing you should do. Yep. And it it's a headshot. It's a headshot. Like I I, I don't even understand how, like. I, I would understand the knife coming in and like hitting you in the head and cutting you across. Something, and, yeah. And you know, opening up a, a cut, but he punctured he through skull. He punctured the fucking skull like three or four inches with this knife. He went no. He went the entire length of the blade. The blade was at least four inches long. Suffice to say, this is enough to cause brain damage. He Threw it with such force that it was that it easily punctured the skull and went all the way up to the hilt. <laughs> I, I don't care, man. This needed a Wilhelm scream too. It did. It it's <laughs> proceeds to steal their guns. I need, I need to get a gif of that. <laughs> we need to just it, please do. I hope I can put that right here somewhere. <laughs> I mean, if he had if he had rushed the guy and stabbed it through his face, I can see it going all the way in like that because he has the force of his arm behind it, you know. And the you know it's just, uh, I mean, look, do I love it as 80s cheese? Of course I do. Of course I it, love it in that. It sense. only works as 80s cheese, man. This is <laughs> this is where the manga comes from, and they've like this is modernized that, it somewhat, but the 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 art the writer of this manga was a huge fan of movies like Commando. An absolute huge fan of movies like that. Rambo, or what was the second Rambo movie? Was, the second Rambo movie was Rambo, wasn't it? The first one was called First Blood, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so Rambo 2 was actually Rambo. And that was the one where it just got fucking silly, wasn't it? Or was it Rambo 2 that got silly? Yes, Rambo just goes on a, a, a killing rampage and he can't be stopped and it's just one guy. <laughs> um, he Just following it, you know, Ash just like, ambushes Commander Fox and he's like I'm gonna get Stop. you and Commander Fox is like nuh uh and he's like <laughs> firing into empty air and he throws down a smoke grenade and escapes because he could do that yeah well it's because like at the moment uh, AG and them f heard gunshots from within they went in you know they they started you know attacking from the outside so that's when Fox yeah, was so, like shit yeah AG Kane Blood Jessica and Seeing all show up and, and Ash freaks out he's like what the fuck are you guys doing here uh, like we came to rescue you. you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the whole thing of you know they show up to to rescue somebody, but they didn't need rescuing in the first place because you mean like a two hundred IQ guy with a fucking aimbot and you mean like the episode in the mental health institute, the comedy episode, the, the, the that fucking was the Bugs greatest episode? episode of <laughs> that was the greatest episode of the season, man. That, that was the best episode of the fucking show. That's just this season. I'm talking about all the shows this season. Oh, oh, then yes, yes, absolutely. So, they get out, they're free, they're safe, yay! And, and it's actually, this is really hard, like, hard to watch scene. They didn't show the rapage, they showed the after effect. And after Ash is out of there, and the, you know, the, the adrenaline's pumping, you know, the adrenaline pumping is coming, you know, subsiding, he starts to shake really violently. And Kane's like, hey man, you, you okay? And he touches him on the shoulder and Ash like flips the fuck out. You know, from, from, from the touch. And he's, he's like, eh, sorry, sorry, I, I just need to sit down. And he's just shaking like a leaf. And Eiji, he doesn't even say anything. He just comes over, he looks at Ash, Ash looks at him, and he just holds him. He just embraces him and just holds him. Doesn't say a damn word. And Ash, you can see it slowly. He calms down the shaking stops and it's just it's this really tough scene it's just watching that 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 after effect of what happened you know even ash even ash who's gone through everything he's been through in his childhood apparently fox did something to him I that guess was it's a good thing that we have not been keeping a rape counter for this show because uh yeah we have had overload here so Fox is back at headquarters. He's interrogating Max Lobo to find out where the um, information is. The information that they stole. <laughs> he, yeah, he, oh, so they pull a Gundam on us here. 
<laughs> he actually, like, Max Lobo laughs in his face because, like, Fox lets it slip that Ash got away. It's like, you even let Ash get away! He's <laughs> like, ha ha ha! That's so hilarious! That's been happening this entire show! <laughs> it's like, Fox, like, you know, SDFU! <laughs> hey, hey, kids, remember, violence isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> so, he knocks him up with, with truth serum, and they're gonna go get the. Knocks uh, him up? What the fuck? It's, it checks him. <laughs> it checks him, fine, checks him with truth serum. Hey, it's we're going with the theme, okay? Of the show. So uh, he injects him with he just, truth. He just got Max Lobo pregnant with truth serum. <laughs> there we go. And they find out where the information is. But Ash and Jessica are too smart. They get there first. They go to um, the the editor guy, and they, you know, yeah. he's still in the hospital. And it's like, hey, information need now where? Because Max is captured. And when it shows the bad guys, they go to the bank. They open the, the deposit box. Empty. Like, they, oh no, it's gone. It's like, was someone else here? Oh yeah, a, a kid and a lady were out here were here earlier. But fuck. Yeah. So then, then they have the scene where Jessica is discussing the information with Ash. Yeah, because she's copying all the information. She's like, this is going to be very damning. Uh, well, it's like it shows her with this this look of <clears throat> like she can't. You know, it's like I can't believe it's not butter on her face. Because like, this is going to be so damning. Uh, the White House is going to be in a frenzy. And she like she turns to Ash. And she's like, he's like. What, what does she say? Is like, she starts to ask ask him about his rapage, and he's just like, it, it, she implies that she got raped. Yes, <laughs> and she goes, look, uh, how did how did you get over it? You know, how it took me six months. You know, how how did you get over it so quickly? And he just look, he doesn't even look at her. He just sort of like walks out of the, out of the room, saying, if I if I had taken six months, I'd be dead, and just sort of walks out, and it's just sort of like. These little snippets into, like, into that world in this anime, it's just so really, it's really hard to watch and listen to sometimes. It's just sort of, ugh. Now keep yeah, the so there's no ugh. ambiguity about the bad guys being bad guys in this show. No. It's, <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, Lau is not, still not happy. He's not happy with Sing. He's like, why do we keep doing whatever Ash says? Why I'm are tired you gonna let Ash bo boss, boss us around? Uh, he's Itachi, and he killed Shorter. <laughs> he's like, I will never recognize him. You're my, you are the boss, Singh, and the only thing I want for you is to be boss of downtown. That's what I want for you. So Shorter would never have bowed to, you know, uh, Ash the way you do. He's like, that's because Shorter was his best friend. You know, I, he's in a different league than me. I don't know what you expect me to do about it. And, you know, it allows, allow he. He's not happy, but he goes back to uh, to um, Yutlung and says, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to... And apparently the thing he asked him to do was kill AG. And, and you know, um, Ash, if he can manage it as well. Say, like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh -uh. If he can manage it. <laughs> to which they, the Blanca and uh, Yutlung give the commentary of, yeah, uh, he can't kill Ash. And Yutlung's like, he could probably kill AG though. Yeah. So he's like, we don't need you. He's like, and, you know, because I already have two other scorpions in the nest. So, meh, meh, meh. so I've got something else for you. But then we don't get to hear what it is. So he pulls in the other two, you know, the Chinese. He's like, hey, kill AG and kill Ash if you can. And of course, that's where the line came from. Blanc is like, you know, they can't. So he's like, eh, make a try and they'll at least kill he's AG. Like, he's like, this is a joke, man. They have no chance <laughs> to kill Ash. So there's this. Touching scene again. This episode had a lot of little touching scenes between Ag and Ash. I love these scenes, where Ag is like, "Look, when this is over, yeah. You know, first off, I'm gonna duck out. You know, I'm gonna go into hiding, so you don't have to worry about me. You know, you gotta, you do what you can, you gotta do. Let's let's finish this. I'm gonna allow you to finish this. But when it's over, please come back to Japan with me. We, you can start over." You know, it's like, yeah, Ash, being 200 IQ, he's like, oh, I don't even know if I can learn the language. And <laughs> yeah, and like, they have this whole sequence where Eiji's teaching him, and he's like, oh, I already knew that. Yeah, he actually, did, he actually like, does a, bunch, a couple of greetings, but he keeps doing these, these like, sexy poses with them, and it's like... It's he's like, like eBay taught me this stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, I've never felt comfortable saying that guy's name. eBay? Because I always think of the goddamn sight ebay.com oh oh i you see know. i'm like I... what 
That's, that's what I think of. So they're having this tender moment. Ash's guard is completely down. It's like Yulong basically, you know, it's like when someone plays chess and they call your move. Yulong says, when he's with AG, he's not the violent leopard. He is, you know, he's a docile pet kitten. You know, you will have no problem if they're in the same room together. And he was right, because they you know, they bust in, AG sees it at the last possible second, pushes Ash out of the way, and takes a bullet or two to the gut. Well, you kind of missed the part where they, you know, since they, they're, AG I? is teaching him the language. Oh, yeah, it's even sadder, yeah. Yeah, because... They went through the greetings, and then, now to then say... he said, sayonara. And I, I think they, they held a little too long there. Yeah. As the guys bust in and then shot shot him. That was slow. -mo. But, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, they shoot uh, AG and then... Right. Like, just... Like, Ash just finished saying, improperly, according to the subtitles, he said it wrong. But he says, Sayonara. And then that's when AG looks up. He sees the dudes in the door. The guns come out. He pushes Ash aside, and it's just... Oh, Ash fucking loses it. Yeah, they push oh. his berserk button, and, um... The aim bot is right back on! Well, Actually, did, I don't think it went the, off. He didn't get the aim bot at first, so maybe his cheats were not on. Uh, no, 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 he got the headshot, and then proceeded to shoot him, like, 30 other times throughout the body. No, he did not get the headshot the first time. He shoots this guy, and then shoots him, like, a million times because he's so pissed off. And then the other guy's running off. He's like, help me, help me. And it's a headshot. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and then just, like, what what clip does he have in this fight? Isn't that his revolver? He has a bandana on. Oh, good point, yes. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. You just can't see it. It's an invisible bandana. Because <laughs> isn't his weapon of choice a revolver? Uh... Was I think it? he's lost his weapon of choice. I don't know. He was firing it with something that had 30 fucking bullets in it. Because he continues to fire at the dude, even though he's dead. Singh has to stop him because he, he's he like, won't stop. Yeah, is like, yo, dude, he's already dead. You don't have to keep shooting. And he runs back and AG is like laying there. Like Jessica's holding him you know, in her lap. And he's like, just say, AG, AG, please wake up. Just please wake up. And he, he opens his eyes. He's like, so you're alive happy about that it just sort of <sighs> so i'm not sure if ag died or not i don't know i mean the the <laughs> episode title was as i lay dying yeah and ash is um to put it mildly none too happy he's um <laughs> he's a little upset um just a little a little bit um apparently blanca little. blanca was gonna go save him apparently Save him from what? From being killed. He was going to. He was supposedly like there was a scene where he, like I don't know what Blanca was planning to do because well he said he um a scene we skipped. My apologies. There's a scene where um Blanca's getting ready to leave. He's put his jacket on. He's got his gun, and you because sitting the other two guys was a joke. Yeah, he gets it. He um he gets ready to leave, and Yu Long is there. He's Yu Long's like I'm disappointed. I've never been able to sneak up on you like this before. And Blanca's all like. That's uh, because I was trying to hide something. No, he said I have nothing to hide. I thought he said I was trying to hide something. No, but... he's like, oh. I, I have nothing to hide. Oh, my apologies. Can't and, stop me, you lung. And he basically said, he, he calls somebody, he's like, look. And at first, we it's like, apparently they have an understanding between them of what they're talking about, but they haven't told us yet. And he's like, he's like, you don't even know where they are. He's like, I'll search everywhere. He, you know, I, I know where he'll probably be. And... And he goes to walk out. He's like, why? Why are you doing this? He's like, because I can't let you kill Agent. And then Yu Lung just goes, they're at Pier 4. They're the fish, you know, the, the, they the fish warehouse or whatever the fuck. And he goes, okay. And then leaves. He's like, why did Yu Lung just tell him? And again, wasn't he supposed to be there to save him? So I'm kind of confused at what that scene was even there for. If he was supposed to be there to stop AG being killed. So the only loose plot thread at this point is that the vampire has not eaten anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He got shipped off to the human ranch. He kind of did, along with... Which apparently, the guy we always would call the uh, vampire and the black guy. Apparently the black guy's name was Kong. 
So I tried to look up the vampire's name, and I couldn't find anything on him. Well, yeah, because if you do a Google search for banana fish vampire, he's not actually a vampire. No, I couldn't find him listed. It, I, I could find all the other characters. I just couldn't find the vampire dude. You know, we'll be right back. I mean, his name is Bones. <laughs> so his name is Bones. Bones and Kong. I mean, they, we have these names in this show. <laughs> uh, he's a fucking vampire, man. Uh, he's not a vampire. He's a vampire. There is no reason he should have two fangs jutting out. <laughs> so that was Banana Fish. Um, is AG dead? Is he not dead? We will find out in the next episode. But this was a really fantastic episode. God, it was... Like I said, I, I don't know how you felt about it. You can chime in if you want. I... I those scenes with Ash and Eiji, where it was just watching Ash break down, and those little scenes between it was... God, that was gut-wrenching sometimes. Well, at first, I was not actually feeling this episode. Okay. And then it brought me back in. It's like... With what? What, what brought you like, back in? It's banana fishness. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... What's that fucking meme of, uh, I tried to quit this, but... I, I just keep coming back. You brought me right back into it. <laughs> like, I can't quit Banana Fish. Even though there's only two episodes left and I'm going to have to. Well, it's not going to... The thing is, here's the thing. Here's, here's the distinction. We're not quitting Banana Fish. Banana Fish is quitting us. Because it's going to end. There's going to be an ending. <sighs> and with every ending... It ends. I just hope we don't get an Evangelion ending. If we get an Evan, man, people have been talking a lot about Evangelion. But that's what was it? Netflix picking it up? Yeah. God damn. Ugh, if we I, get I just don't want to get something like that where they're like uh, using some trippy imagery and, and just going, "Congratulations, Congra congratulations, Ash! Congratulations! <laughs> you got all the headshots. This is the me that you. This is the me that you perceive. This is the you that you perceive. This is the me that that he perceives." Congratulations! Shut the fuck up! Stupid last two episodes of Evangelion. Yeah, we're, we're, let's hope that it does not pull that crap. Let's hope that we get like a, a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood bombastic awesome ending. Which was very awesome. Uh, very awesome, according to Featherhoof. He, he wasn't as taken with it as I was, but... Um, oh, I liked it. I just I don't... He doesn't like martial arts alchemists. <laughs> There is no reason that Edward should know Kung Fu. Too bad! It's great and it's awesome. Fuck you. So with that, Banana Fish was also awesome. And uh, with that, that's the end of week 10. Ow. And uh, we're probably going to have to take off now. And with that, that is the end of week 10. That was a really good week. I mean, even though Goblin Slayer was useless as useless could be, it was. I still enjoyed watching it. And... Um, we have two weeks to go? Mm, two or three weeks. I think some of them have 13 episodes. And if the rumor about Goblin Slayer's next episode is true... Yeah? Well, um, that's yeah. What, we'll, we'll talk about that when and if it comes to pass. Let's hope it's not. Um, any predictions on how this season's going to end? Do you think the season's going to end out strong? You know what? This season has been incredibly strong. I, I can't remember... A season where I've been like, holy shit, this stuff is good, and I want to wake up every Sunday and watch this stuff. <laughs> um, except for the space fishing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, yeah, it's, it's going to end up strong. We, we have uh, Banana Fish, uh, Goblin Slayer, if it's not going to, if it's going to go back to Goblin Slayer. Yes. Um, well, I mean, if the ending of this episode was to be believed, we should. Well, yeah, that's a, that, there. There's no way there's not going to be uh, some goblin genocide in the next episode, or whenever they get back to it. Yeah. Um, what else are we watching? Um, Iroduku. Iroduku's the only one that I might be worried about. Uh, there was another show that we were going to watch, which was the lesbian romance one. I'm kind of sad that we don't we didn't um, we didn't watch it. I've actually been looking into that. It actually, sounded like it was going really good. And that is a phenomenal show. Uh, Bloom into you. Yes. Um, that has uh, amazing cinematography, and I feel like it was, it's the better slice of life show, so... Um, <laughs> Are you saying that we chose 
poorly. poorly. <laughs> uh, we might we might have. Um, I mean, Iridoku's visuals can't be beaten by no. anything that's airing this season. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, <laughs> other than maybe the the fight scenes from uh, SSS S Gridman. <laughs> Um, Just say grid, man. You don't have to put the four S's in front of it. Yeah, quadruple S grid, man, <laughs> which is uh, a show that everybody should be watching. But I'm, I'm that's I'm, even s- more syllables. Quadruple, uh, no, it's the same amount of syllables. Well, it's, it's, like when, it's easier than remembering to say four S's at once. <laughs> it's the uh, quadruplization. <laughs> quadruplization. That's even more syllables. <laughs> you get a little technical here. You're losing <laughs> all the viewers. Yay! Wait, no, that's bad. So we better we better end this before we lose any more viewers. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Let's 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 just get to that 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 part. Uh, so we have uh, two, possibly three more, more weeks to go, guys. We hope you've been enjoying the journey with us. We can't wait to see how it ends. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, share it, or you can click on the annotations for other videos we've done. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you all next, next time. time.